Hello guys, in this tutorial, we will learn to write our first request with rest assured and while we are at it, we will understand the basics of a request code. Before we begin writing the code, let me give you a brief overview of what this rest assured library is all about. Rest assured is a Java library that provides a domain specific language for writing powerful maintainable tests for RESTful APIs. Rest assured is one of the most used library for REST API automation testing. REST Assured library behaves like a headless client to access REST web services. We can create highly customizable HTTP requests to send to the RESTful server. This enables us to test a wide variety of request combinations and in turn test different combinations of core business logic. REST Assured library also provides the ability to validate the HTTP responses received from the server. For example, we can verify the status code, status message, headers and even the body of a response. This makes rest assured a very flexible library which can be used for testing. So now that we have got familiar with the rest assured library, it's time to start assembling piece by piece the code to implement the same get request in rest assured through our code. This get request is the same get request for books list we studied in Postman and Swagger tool. And before we begin writing our test, let us first know the dependencies we need to add for rest assured. So here you can see as I have displayed on the screen my pom.xml and I have added two dependencies. Number one dependency is the rest assured dependency with the latest version being 4.3.0. And the next dependency that we are going to use is the JUnit dependency with the latest version being 5.6.2. Both of these repositories can be obtained at mavenrepository.com. You can simply copy it and paste it in your pom.xml. Now that we have learned about the dependencies to be added, it's time to learn about the rest assured class. So the starting point to a rest assured test is the rest assured class. We will use this class to create a request specification for a given endpoint. And to do that, let us get into our IDE and learn more about this class. Now to begin with, firstly, I will create a package under the src test folder and name it as requests. So here I am under src test java folder and I select package and I name it requests and I click finish and that creates a request package. Here we have the request package. I will create a class under it and name it as get request. I will also ask the IDE to stop the public static void main method for me which will make things easier and now I will begin by the rest assured class so here I have a rest assured class and then I will call upon the static variable of base URI I will assign the value of base URI path of the bookstore API to this particular variable The rest assured class contains a static variable called base URI which has been initialized to the default value of localhost and hence this line which uses a class called rest assured is set up to a request with the specified base URI. In our case this base URI is httpbookstore.toolsqa.com. This is called the base URI because this is the root address of the resource. Now coming back to our io.restassured.restassured class. This class forms the basis of any kind of HTTP request that is required in the test. Some of the key features of this class are that it creates HTTP requests against a base URI. It supports creating requests for different HTTP methods such as get, put, post and several others. It makes HTTP communication with the server and passes on the request that we created in our test to the server. It also retrieves the response from the server. Alongside, it helps to validate the response received from the server. Now that we have grown familiar with the rest assured class, we move on to our next class, the request specification class. The request specification class represents a request. Here, the rest assured class that you are seeing in the code is returning the request against the base URI as specified in the previous line. Every request in the REST Assured library is represented by an interface called Request Specification. This interface allows you to modify the request like adding headers or adding authentication details. 
The word specification at the end is used to signify how the request should look like when it is sent to the server. Now that we have understood what request specification class is all about, let's get back to our get request class that we created before and start writing the next steps to create an HTTP request. So here I am and as a next step, what I do is that I mention request specification, HTTP request and I assign it and I import the necessary class for it. What I did in this particular step is that I created an object of the type request specification which is nothing but HTTP request in our case and to this the rest assured class will return the request against the base URI. This base URI was specified by us in the previous step when we wrote the code for defining the static variable of base URI. Now that the request specification object is there, it calls the server to get the resource. This piece of code tells request specification to issue a request to the server. Now that we have a request specification, we will make an actual request to the server. And this can be achieved by calling the request method and the associated method type. To do that, let's move back to our code. So here we are, we move back to our get request code and write the code to obtain the response. We select the method and get is the method we will be using. So I select that and I specify the URI to which the get request should access. So we will use the same one which we use for our swagger tutorial. And there we have it. So in this code, the request method returns a response object. And let me introduce the import. Here we have the import. So the request method returns a response object. It represents the response obtained from the web server. Issuing request basically takes two types of takes two arguments. Number one is the HTTP method type, which is get in our case, and then the second is the string argument where we pass the URI. This step actually sends the request to the remote server and gets the response back. This is the reason why the return type of the request is specified as response. Now that we have received the response in our response object, it's time to study the HTTP response we are getting from the server. We will study about it in more details in the next video of this series.